Hey everyone, I'm Erin Otan, Director of Research Programs at Z Prime, and I'm here today with Shabri Raja, co-founder and CEO of Nepris. Um, thanks for joining me today, Shabri. Thanks, Erin, for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so we usually start things off with a quick lightning round on these interviews. Are, are you up for that? I will try. <laughs> sure, go ahead. All right, so what is the last movie you watched? Oh my gosh, I am actually, um, my favorite favorite is Pride and Prejudice. I love period drama. So um, I keep watching that like once every six months. So that was the last one. <laughs> All right. And uh, what's your favorite spot in Austin to, to hang out? To hang out in Austin. I love the River Place Trail. That's a pretty one. Yeah. And what about any new hobbies or, or routines you picked up during during quarantine? I love working out every day. I miss going to the gym, but we've set up a home gym. So um, I still pack my water bottle and change into my workout outfits and walk to the backyard to the home gym. So I love that routine. Yeah, that's good. I think actually getting dressed and changing from regular clothes to workout clothes and stuff. Right. Working yeah. workout clothes all day helps me to actually remember to exercise too. Yeah. Um, all right, so Nepris is an education tech company, um, but I know that you were born in and grew up in rural India. So can you just talk a little bit about how you got interested in technology and, and how you knew that you really wanted a career in tech? Yeah, I am, um, you know, I grew up in in um, uh, rural India uh, on a coconut farm. So went to boarding school starting at the age of five, because that's the only way my parents could ensure that I got a good education. So I always say my um, exposure was very, very limited um, to the boarding school and the farm. Um, so I really did not know what a career in technology even meant or looked like. So I, I didn't really aspire for it. But um, the one thing that really gave me insight into that world of technology was while my entire most of my family is into farming and um, live in rural areas, um, I had one uncle um, who was a technology entrepreneur um, in Bangalore, India. Bangalore is like the Silicon Valley of India, you know, so he's a very successful entrepreneur. So I got to go spend my summer holidays there um, as a kid, and I got to see a whole different world. So um, they, um, you know, visiting his company and factory, and, and one time as we were driving to his office, um, he pointed out this huge sprawling campus um, company on, of this company called Biocon India Limited. And uh, he said, do you know who, who founded this company? And um, he, he told me about Kiran Mazumdar Shah. She was a woman founder who founded the first Biocon company, um, in, I mean, um, biotechnology company in India. And for me, coming from a small rural place with no exposure, seeing this big sprawling successful company um, in, in the Silicon Valley of India being founded and run by a successful woman was something that I had never imagined possible. I always think back and think that was my first spark thinking, somebody like that can do it or, you know why not me so and that's really what your company does now um sounds like you you know you had exposure you learned about something you, you were able to see it and and hear about it and now that's what your company does by um bringing industry to students and, and really educating them yep yeah and i know you do work with a lot of rural communities in texas too so how how can that technology really be employed in these rural communities and help them you know help them engage and get more involved in the community help with the community development in the long run no absolutely um so i'll kind of you know answer the first part of it um because it's all connected you know growing up in a rural area and my own personal experience was it just took one spark and one one exposure and that that spark kind of turned into something later, you know, the many, many 
experiences and opportunities that comes after that first spark. But I always say we're in the business of creating sparks for students, you know, so how do we expose students to many of these opportunities and people, places, role models that creates that one spark that lets them sort of explore further, right? So that's what our technology platform does is we are providing employers an opportunity to connect with their future workforce. They're connecting with students and, and especially rural students. Like if you think about it without technology, um, really in rural areas, we, we, they're not surrounded by this diversity of, of companies and industries. Like, you know, we were in Austin, we, we may look out our window and see Google and Intel and Microsoft and uh, all these different companies, but someone in Roscoe, Texas, um, doesn't have all these opportunities that, that, that are in their neighborhood. So technology is the only way that we can bring these worlds to them. You know, so, um, I mean, if I was doing this 15, 20 years back, there, the technology was limited, but today, even most of the rural districts, rural areas have pretty good um, internet access and, and access to technology uh, that is allowing us to use our platform to sort of bring down these walls and connect students, no matter where they are, to the same opportunities that students in urban areas have we want to bring the same opportunities to rural rural school districts. And that's what we 60, 62% of the total students we reached last year were from rural and lower socioeconomic populations. So oh, wow. Yeah. How have things changed over the last two months for, for you all with this the onset of, of COVID-19? That's a great question. And how much time do you have, you know, for me? <laughs> a lot, a lot. I mean, we still have people reaching out to us saying, oh, my God, you're in a great position. You were doing virtual learning all along. So now is a great time to really sort of get more people involved. And while that is true, there are challenges. You know, we were we were working with school districts and through the school district student had students had access to the technology. But today, because schools have closed and students are at their homes, um, they may not have access to the same technology that their school um, had, right? So that is the biggest challenge right now is equity of access sort of takes on a whole another meaning. If a family doesn't have a laptop, if they don't have internet connection, how can they still continue using platforms like ours? So, so the way we are addressing it is, I mean, it's not something that one company like us alone can address. The community is addressing it really well, like districts are providing Round Rock ISD, even before they did anything, the first thing they did was give give out laptops to students that didn't have laptops. And companies like at and are now providing free or super um, discounted like $10 per month internet access for families with school children, right? So everybody is sort of stepping up to help bridge this gap. From our perspective, you know, we've never, uh, one thing we've, we've never realized until this happened was even in lower socioeconomic families, um, the there is a, a common gaming device which provides sort of the sole entertainment for the whole family. I, I did not realize this, but we're learning these things now and saying, okay, if they have access to a gaming device, how can we at least provide, if not all of it, at least part of our resources through the gaming devices? And we've tested it out and most of our career videos that are on demand accessible to students can now be accessed through an Xbox or a PS3 or or just any um, any phones. So we're looking at different devices. What do these families have? Looking at data and saying, how can we meet them where they are? So, yeah. That's a really creative way of delivering content. And that I think that's a really interesting lesson learned that can probably be applied by, um, you know, other industries and organizations. So that's awesome. Yeah. And then the other thing we're seeing, which is a big, big, um, change is um, lots and lots of employers are coming to us saying, hey, um, all our in-person summer events are canceled, you know, so how do we, how do we do something um, without, you know, there's no plan for replacing all those, you know, internships, job shadows, 
how do we continue doing those things? So we are working with different groups to try and use our platform to help companies, school districts, community colleges continue offering their internship programs and job shadows virtually. Um, so so we're, we're trying to meet people where they are. We're, we've also opened up the whole process. We've made everything, uh, all the industry, virtual industry chats and all the video library, the career explorer, everything free for now. Um, so, and we've made it easy for parents and students to sign up and access it. So it's, it's been nonstop because our goal right now is how do we support the community? And given that we're a virtual learning platform, how do we make it easily accessible for everybody? So. That's great. I'm sure parents definitely appreciate having that access right now. And they're trying to figure out how to keep their kids busy, keep them engaged. So that's great. Um, Last question, and this question comes from Z Prime's co-founder, Mark Ishawk. He's been asking everyone this. Is there anyone out there, it could be a friend, um, someone you don't even know, uh, that you would like to give a virtual high five to? Yeah, it's not one person. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. So I want to give a virtual high five to all the teachers who've gone sort of outside their comfort zone to try and adapt to the situation and still keep in touch with their students and keep them engaged. It's not possible for all teachers to do it, but the ones that are doing it are going way out of their way um, to, to keep that engagement happening. So high five to all those teachers that are continuing to do the best they can. High five to all the teachers. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Shabri, for joining me today. It's been great talking to you and, and hearing about Nepris, and I'm excited to, to continue following you all and see, see what you do in the future. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Erin. Appreciate it. Have a good day.